12 fifth. This is where I was born and bred in it. This is where I sold my, my first drugs at. I, I popped my first pistol at. I did so many different things in this neighborhood, but more than anything, I had a chance to get to know love. I had to get to know the, the rules of the game, the rules of the street. Um, community, family community, you know what I mean? This block right here, 119 in Harvard, was a community block, a safe haven. Everything around you was a little different, but this block right here alone, I mean, I just, I mean, you're going to see my crib, man. You're going you're gonna to see where I grew up in. I got my homeboy, cradle to the grave. My homeboy, Shelly Randolph. And I know if y'all watch my confessionals, things of that nature, y'all probably heard me say his name a couple of times. I got my man with me today. But we're going to take a little journey. We're going to take a little journey um, in the city of Chicago, South Side. We already know the Pullman area, the Rosen area. Um, so many um, destructive things, man. I mean, we got people on block speaking, man. I love it. I feel like I'm back at home for real, yo. But um, we're going to take a journey on the, the good things, the bad things, the the, the joyful towns, the sorrowful town, but we gonna take a journey. 119 Harvard, man, it feels good to be back on the block, man. South Side represent, baby. Holla. Yeah, man. I mean, when I think about Chicago, I think about um, we really help. If we think about the world that we live in now, I, I think about a lot of we we was trendsetters i want to say when it came to a lot of this hood stuff a lot of this game banging stuff a lot of this dope stuff oh. um I, I just see a lot of different um entities when it comes to how we help started some of this so i believe that's why i'm so passionate now on when i when i do what i do when it comes to ministry when it comes to helping people especially these youths because I was them, you know what I mean? I was them, and right here, we looking at my crib. Old crib, I should say. I mean, oh man, 119.30. I mean, I, I not only I lives here, but I also, man, I was able to um, raise my kids here too. My moms and dad blessed me with this crib. I mean, I mean, moms and pops blessed me with this crib when I was a uh, in my 20s, I mean, just think about it. Born here, raised here, had an opportunity to raise my kids here. This crib, it was a big tree here. I mean, I used to get on this neighbor nerd. I know you remember that, right? Oh, yeah. We used to, I forget her name now. Yeah, uh, I smoke cigarettes and stuff. She'd tell them. <laughs> yes, yeah. I know, right? Yeah, man. That was disrespectful. You know, back then I used to be like, man, yeah. man, your business, man. I'm just standing on the sidewalk, but you know, you never smoke in front of nobody, nobody house exactly. like that. You never do that. We never do that, man. We was ignorant. If you right. look over here, Miss Johnson. This lady right here was a blessing. I believe she was a real life angel. Oh, God bless Miss Johnson. Yes, yeah. I believe she was a real life angel. I mean, she taught me so much at an early age. She taught my family mm -hmm. at an early age. And if you look over here, this window, if you if we can see it good. My dog gone pooky. I, this is how I know Alicia Nugent was special. I don't know how this happened, but she was hanging out that window right there, literally hanging yeah. out. And then I don't know how she got there. On all I know is by the grace of God, we caught her when we caught her, and she literally fell from up there to down there in uh, her mom's arms. I was at work at the time, but she fell in her mom's arms, and uh, I knew at that moment God had her back. But right. hey, we're gonna take another journey, man. Hey, this is some good stuff, some sweet stuff. Let's talk about a little hood stuff too. Let's let's go ahead down the block real quick and check out some some trouble we got into. All right, down here we headed to um, Pullman Park, West Pullman Park. This is where the four corner, four corner hustlers used to be. Those that's not not familiar with it, it was two different games. You got your GDs, we got your six point star, you got your five point star. And um, me and my homeboy, we used to come down to this park a lot for a lot of different reasons. And I never forget um, one. I remember Shelly, I had that pistol on my arc. And can you show them a picture of the streets real quick? The area oh, yeah. you talking oh, about, yeah. yeah. Remember, I had the pistol and um, oh, yeah. trying to show off, right? And then I messed around and had my handlebars, you know, and I did a, a flip or whatever, oh, and yeah. I started tumbling like halfway down the block. Oh yeah, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just uh, all you had to do is say you meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, we finna get up, man. I'm, I, this park stands out for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one, I remember getting kicked out. Um, we did like a school trip before and I got kicked out because I did something I had no business doing. 
which I forgot what that was. Yeah, uh, we had a school trip, and I got caught with a knife. You got it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in eighth grade. And even with St. Catherine, uh, we went to St. Catherine. Uh, it's a Catholic school, but goes back to trendsetters, go back to us um, helping do some of this BS out here in these streets. I believe we helped tear down <laughs> St. Catherine when it came to the to the what's the word I'm trying to use? We was hood in to there. Destruction. Yeah, yeah, to destruction. Yeah, to destruction. We was really hood. We was hood in there. It, it, it yeah. changed. You know, it changed a lot, man. We got older, like seventh grade. Yeah. Six, that's when the whole society had changed around that time. That's yeah. when the the '90s came in, and and things just wasn't the same. Uh, excuse me. Things just wasn't the same no more. Yeah. When the '90s came, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, a lot of things was changed. Like even here, um, up until this point, this was a good park. You bring your kids. Uh, I remember this, this park stands out to me because I started recognizing the gang. The game and the gang is different. I forget the guy's name. He was a folk kind hustler. Uh, he was one of the big dogs, and he tried to recruit me, basically tried to flip me, tried to flip me from GD to folk kind hustler. And he was talking good stuff. I bring him up because he first helped me understand the business side of game banking, the business side of selling drugs, things of that nature. He really had my mind open up like, you can really do something with this, you know what I mean? But um, I say that not to, um, to glamorize it, I say it because this is what happens when you're trying to find yourself. This is what happens when you're trying to discover yourself. This is what happens when somebody see your gift. It's crazy, that man saw my gift. He said, man, you a young hustler, you, you a young G. I know you GD, but you got a gift in you. If we don't be careful, you got these you got these other hustlers telling your kids this, you know what I mean? If your kids ain't on the side of foundation, they're going to fall prey to this, you know what I mean? So that's why I say this. I tell that little story. But, um, yeah, this this part um, played, played a lot of history, you know what I mean? Like I said, I used to um, show off right here, man, just be that, that wild boy, you dig? Saying life is crazy, man. Life is crazy. All right, let's go ahead and take a look, man. Me and my homeboy, um, when we had our shootout. Remember we got shot at on the other block, bro? Oh, yeah. And your shoe fell off. You tried to go get it? Oh, yeah. Let, let's go. go right let's, on that way. Let's go over there, bro. Oh, shoot. I did go back and go get it. <laughs> you did? <Yep>. Go back. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if y'all noticed, but everything I've been showing y'all, there's so much to show, but I'm just showing y'all in like an immediate radius, uh, uh, radius of how life is. I mean, you can have the best of times and the worst of times right in about a four or five blocks, you know what I mean? But this block right here, it's 120th and Stewart. I mean, me, like I said, we're not game banging stuff, and I forget what we did, who we did, I know who we did it too, but we started getting shot at, busted, and I remember, that we go, we go pull over. Yeah, I think it was right over here. I know, we know the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> It was just too funny. Uh, it's funny how you can get conditioned, right? You can live off of shooting when bullets flying past your head. And I think that's what we go through now. We are so conditioned that it ain't funny, man. Let's go ahead and take a look, though. This is... It's right here. Right, right here, it's for the tree. I mean, bullets right flying here. everywhere, yo. And I, next thing, I, have you ever experienced bullets? I mean, bullets just flying. I mean, and you running for your life. But well, my man, I never forget, he just bought this Jordan. Just bought this Jordan. And they one of them fell off. And then you went back and got it later. But I'm like, Shelly, come on, come on. <laughs> man, you ain't lying, But man. if you got shot at multiple times in your life, it's it's crazy how you get conditioned. It, it, it felt normal. It felt normal. It felt like, oh, there ain't nothing. All and then you look, nothing. look back, like you could've walked, you couldn't walk, you could've left this earth. Yeah. With one little, if they just went this way or that way, you know what I mean, if it ricocheted, you could've yeah. been not walking. Yeah. You could have been sitting back not living, not breathing. Yeah. You know, we weren't number 18, 19. Yeah. We ain't even turned 18 yet. And then what makes it, exactly, I think we was about 17, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. And I think, too, what's the crazy part, because we go back outside like ain't nothing happened. We, right. We continue to live life like ain't nothing happened. And don't take for granted, I live right, I live right on the next block. I mean... This is how our society is, you know. We always wonder how this, how that. We live here. How can you escape this when you live here? How can you, how can you do something different when you're in a community? When you got gangs on every block? When you're trying to find your way? When you're trying to be a man? When you're trying to stand your ground? It's challenging, you know what I mean. But I thank God for brothers like Shelly. I thank God for my parents. I thank them for showing me God because they kept the balance. 
it kept the balance to a point where yes, I'm in these streets, but I knew I was better than these streets. I knew I was better than what I was doing. Matter of fact, I think it was probably a, a house, a building next, or the next block when I first got my tattoo, Thug Life. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was the next block, the basement. Yeah, in the basement. I mean, uh -huh. we getting hood tattoos and basement. I mean, it was, that's what we knew. You know what I mean? Yes, we got taught different. I believe I can speak to you as well. We wasn't coached to be in the streets, at least not by our parents, no. but by, you know, maybe some siblings, maybe some older cousins. This is how the game worked. You know what I mean? And when you get a taste of something and you like it and it produces, back back then we didn't care about no good fruit, bad fruit. We care about something being produced. You know what I mean? A little extra money, a little this, a little that. You know, so um this is just another experience, man. But I want to take you. We're gonna, we're gonna hit up. We're about to hit up Rosalind because I want to get us out of Pullman. I want my man to take the him too. But uh, I want, I want to just show you guys, man, what we're about. So thank you for what you're doing, Shelly. I appreciate All right, you. No problem, brother. We'll get back with you. All right. All right. All right, y'all. Just want to hit up me and my me and my homeboy school. A lot of people. Uh, man, this school made a uh, major difference, man, in the community, I will say, because it was like family. I felt like we was family, but I felt like we was a bunch of badasses, too. I mean, we was really, uh, we was ignorant, man. I really believe we ushered in a new era of ignorance, man, and um, I can't help but to be kind of stuck on that because so many, so often we ask, how did it get like this? How did it get like this? And then to look back at my life, yeah, that's how I got like this. Ignorance, man, not caring. I mean, at that time, the parents were still doing their thing. You know, I believe trying to take care of their kids and, and teach the kids, right? But now, the parents ain't even around, so I can see how generations do get worse and worse. And even looking at the community, I mean, it was a lot of abandoned buildings and, and, and houses now. A lot of stuff is ran down. But here we is. St. Catherine, I mean, St. Catherine, uh, General, then it became the Assumption St. Catherine. And this is what yeah, me and my homeboy one. met, man. Uh, what, from second grade? Yeah, first. First grade. <laughs> so that was like um, like 30 years ago, or <laughs> more than 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, over 30 years ago. 34, 30. I want to say. I mean, yeah, about 34, 30, man. 30, and we 34. 41 and 40. That's crazy, yo. But um, yes, this is St. Catherine, man. And um, I'm going to jump out real quick. Yeah, it's amazing that uh, we're back on, this, on these grounds right here. I spent, oh my God, from preschool, now kindergarten up until my eighth grade graduation. I spent it all here. I mean, it was a blessing. You know, I think my parents spent too much money, by the way. But uh, it was a blessing, man. I met family. I met my boy, Shelly. I met so many uh, other friends. Marlon, what's up, Marlo? Um, Gregory, what up, Tua? I mean, all my, my brothers, man. But more than anything, this is Pullman. This is the South Side. This is what I knew. This is how I was brought up. I was brought up with some streets. I was brought up with some spiritual, I was brought up with balance. And for that, I'm grateful. I wouldn't change a thing, you know what I mean? I, I thank God that for the people in my life. And I'm excited, man. And more than anything, I'm excited to be, um, to have my first season of Flavor in Your Ear. I mean, we're gonna take a hiatus for a minute. We're gonna take a break. I'm gonna be transitioning to, um, to, to blocks, you know. I'm gonna build up some more episodes for you guys. Season two coming back in the fall. But um, yeah, I'm about to get in some blogs though. I'm about to go ahead and finish up my writing for my short film. I'm excited about that, you know? And it's about balance, right? That's what I believe what life is about. You can't have too much of this. You can't have too much of that. You gotta have the right portions. You know what I mean? This is chess, not checkers. So um, I thank you guys. But I'm gonna have my homeboy. I'm gonna give my homeboy the uh, opportunity to show Rosen. Even though we was right here together, but it's two, it's two, it's like two different worlds at the same time. My part was, was something, but his part was really 100. You know what I mean? I mean, so um, I thank you guys more than anything, and God bless you. And I'll see you back, flaming your ear.
Thank you. God bless. You. How y'all doing, people? I'm Shelly Randolph. One of the last, uh, one of Rosen Pioneers. I ain't gonna say one of the last men standing around here, you know. But uh, I'm about to show you uh, parts of Rosen and we just begin with the kids off the block memorial. And can you break that down for those that's not in this state, not in this country? What this well, Kids Off the Block is a uh, nonprofit organization in uh, Rosen, uh, founded by Diane Leitner. Uh, she actually stays right across the street from Memorial, right there on 117th, right here on Michigan. Uh, very nice lady. She actually got awarded uh, on CNN, uh, uh, like a humanitarian award. I don't, I don't know exactly what the name was, so I don't want to mess it up, everything up. She got awarded for that. The sick definitely is recognizing her. Uh, so that's why I want to show you what Kids Off the Block really is, is it's trying to uh, get kids off the block. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it being spoken, they're trying to get kids that's on the block, off the block. You know, basketball tournaments, you know, kind of programs, learning programs, anything like that to help kids do anything because it's a shortage of it. You know, we don't have a ceasefire anymore. The governor, uh, well, the then governor didn't want to fund it anymore. He didn't see a purpose in it. And that's what we really need out here in this community. That's what. I feel can at least help or do something than, than just saying, hey, let's just lock them up. Institution, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. And a lot of these kids just plain don't need help. They don't have any love out here. I done seen it firsthand. I know half their parents, they, you know, either their parents done went to addiction, father then probably got killed when they was one. They don't even know who their father is. And the mother just doing whatever. This is how it is. You know what I'm saying? Working so much where they can't pay attention to anything yeah. and the streets just end up raising. So that's all they really know when they, you know, trying to get a piece of the pie. That's so true. Here you got something that's just actually spoiled rotten. I'm not going to lie to you. So, this is the memorial. Save a team, do something. This kid's off the block memorial tribute. It, uh, it started out as, like, just a simple couple of plaques. You know, like, a couple of plaques with, you know, fallen kids. I was a part of the organization, the part of the things like that. I was participating. And it started out with just, like, a couple of little bricks and then it just turned out to be a whole big memorial and that's it is it she made the memorial and that's what's uh, sad and that's what uh, sad to me about the whole area because that just tells you how vicious this area it is you know how it is with the riddle with crime and violence and it is so many and it's just a lot and kids and these are all young kids these are all teenagers 18 you know things like that 24 they have their names like that 22 27 you know things like that so it's it's just sad that when, um, to see something like this, because this, this should, this, things like that actually shouldn't even be posted in the neighborhood like this. This, this is, this is bad, but we got to recognize it. I'm, I'm happy that she put it up, and, and we want to recognize it to save the team and do something about it. You know what I mean? People get things misconstrued with snitching and anything like that. I, I don't know how, what you want to say about that. If I see somebody shooting on my block. You know, you're a taxpayer. You want things to be right. You, you see, you, you know it's keeping you from your kids playing on the uh, street or, you know, just having a good time. You know, okay, we used to have to go in. What was it? The street lights come on? Yeah. Okay, now <laughs> yeah. we, we got that part. Now ain't even that. You, you can come yeah. out at 10 o'clock in the morning and taking out the garbage, man. You out of there. Yeah. Because somebody just want to be chaotic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chaotic. Wow. Don't be scared of these people, man. Call. You know who it is? Like, hey, man, this would be just, this would be at that. Take control of your neighborhood again. And let me ask you this, brother. Um, far as you once again, uh, I know that you was a part of the problem, and now you're a voice of a solution. About you once being a problem, what can we do other than you know what you said? Yes, snitching. You know, well, we're gonna we're gonna speak our mouth. I don't want to use the word snitching. Right. It's, <laughs> but, it's not necessarily. It's not, snitching. I don't yeah. know how you want to call it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's that that name just just explode all over the yeah. doggone place. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's 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 it's. I don't even want to even touch it anymore. If you see something bad, and you know you don't like it in your neighborhood. And you know that you can't live a normal life. Do something about it. Just do something about That's it. it. That's all I can say. Don't be scared. No, amen. But anyway. Amen. Like, well, just do something about it. Point blank period. Just right. do something. Exactly. Whatever you, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you, how you doing? doing? So whatever you can do, do something. That's how you're going to make a change. Exactly. Amen, brother. All right, uh, we're going we're gonna to check out some more Roseland, man. But Roseland is like Inglewood. I mean, uh, it's yes. when it comes to murders, things of that uh, nature. Murders about, about second to Inglewood. It's about... Yes. Uh, yeah, the murders, the the the, uh, the gangs, the just just overall just uh, havoc, just like chaos. Yes. You know the poverty and everything is is and you know 
I've been here, I've been around here since since the early 80s. I've been around 41 years. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people come and go, and i just seen what really tore it down. You know what I mean? Which is, you know, the uh, crack academic go most likely was definitely. <laughs> Hello. Oh, how you doing? Hey, how you this doing? Is... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know who you may this run is... up on. Hey, how Hello. you doing? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? We was just recording this. So this uh we crossed the tracks now. We call this other side of the tracks. So we're going in um Roseland right now. This this Wentworth. Uh, it's my strip right here. Uh, a lot of stuff that came and went, you know, it was real uh shabby. You know, I moved away a couple of times. I was gone for like about five years, you know, in you know, another state, then came back, then left for like about a year and a half, came back. And it just every time I look, man, it just you know, sometimes you just feel sorry, like, man, I just, you know, I'm just waiting for somebody, and including me, to probably invest more into the neighborhood. You know what I mean? We're we missing the corner stores. Look at the band. Yeah. Look yeah. at all this. You know, we're missing all that. You know, a lot of things got tore down because yeah. people just couldn't, they wasn't buying, you know? A lot of houses gone, building right here, you know? Yeah, you know this, was, this was our stumping ground, man. It was a lot of action out here. Yeah. It seemed when like it was, yeah, like it's kind of dead now. Well, what, yeah, it's because, uh, Sad to say, a lot of people, like, I'm pretty much still a, one of the originals around here. A couple of people I grew up with, that we all grew up together, still here. I mean, seriously, when I say a couple, I mean a couple. Yeah. You know, it's like really a handful. Yeah. Um, uh, but everybody else has pretty much moved away. You know, all the uh, game bangers, so if you want to say that, pretty much got caught doing uh, all your uh, game bangers that uh, got caught up in the game of. Uh, Back in the mid '90s or whatever, they either, you know, sadly passed away, you know, lost their life, or they did a long stint in jail, or or are still doing a long stint. Okay. And the ones that got out, God bless them. You know, they'll probably come around here, see what's happening. You say, hey, how you doing? And they moved on and took care of their business and got their life together. Mm -hmm. They corrected themselves. You know, at least, I mean, I don't know if you go do that time like that. At least come out knowing, <laughs> learning something. You know what I mean? Makes sense. So, well, even even with this trip, man, I can remember. Car races, I can remember. Yeah, well, <laughs> some of everything. We still fly up and down here, man. It's Reworth Freeway. It don't go nowhere. It still don't you know go nowhere. But right now, the street kind of messed up. They working on the street now. You know, when they start repaving them, you're going to see it again. For sure. For sure. We ain't done with that yet. So let yeah, me. It should be a lot more than that. You know, everybody around here, man, we just, you know, we just not all, just, everybody around here just not game bangers and drug dealers. It's just, that was just the, 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 the drug dealer part. You know, it's the money right there, I guess people figure. You're going to give it somebody, might as well be me. Yeah, but the, man, there's a whole bunch of people that know some of everything. We got mechanics, carpenters around here, plumbers. We had a lot of self-sufficient people, man. We, we built stuff around here in our childhood. My childhood around here was fun. We Absolutely. built things. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's You know, I told, told my son that, you know, back in the day, you know, he's into his computers. It, it just, evolution just changed. Now, instead of probably like motors or doing anything like that, then technology. Okay, that's cool. And it's going far for him, and I, I love the man for that. You know, little guy doing his thing. But when I was a kid, man, I used to man, build mini bikes. We used to take Jeez, motors off, off of, we used to take <laughs> motors off snow blowers and put a little crank on them and do this, man. Put on our bikes, man. And, you know, we was like little engineers, man. We didn't even know it. You wow. know, man, we 10 years old doing this. Sure. You know, so we go ahead and find this where I grew up, man. That's why I still live, and I grew up. I still live. Uh, uh, doing a little work to it again, uh, remodeling, got to get like new things uh, done to it. As, as you know, you stay here long enough, you still got to get new stuff. Absolutely. It keeps things uh, in order and everything. Uh, but that's say other than that, it's, it's pretty, it's fairly quiet because that's what happened with a lot of people and a lot of people moved away and just don't have no time for it. For sure. You know, man. and uh, you know, a lot of the chaos, because it was real chaotic probably about, I want to say a year or two ago. Okay. Just with little uh, drug houses, what you call them, trap houses. Had a lot of that, you know, them only last so long. I'm happy that uh, the police, good job. They got that gone away or whatever happened. Yeah. Snitching or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm happy it's gone. You're happy to you know go for a blank so, period. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I'm not going to play, you know, like I'm just the, the best one out here. You know, I, I, I put my bad, you know, I put my spoiled milk in the, in the, in the cream too. You know what I mean? So I love that analogy, brother. You know, it's you know I'm not perfect. I'm not gonna say everything because I don't want to incriminate myself. But you know, it's it's a lot of things I done did. I didn't I done made you know little situations just to get by and, and make and capitalize off of them. I have. 
You know what I'm saying? I used to, man, streets be lying with cars and everything. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I don't want that life. I don't want my son even see nothing like that. Mm. That's something that's, that's something should nobody even want. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a waste of time when, you, when it's all said and done. When you, when you do it and then you look back on it, if you ain't gain nothing off of it, even if you gain some off of it, just look at the risk. You still working some kind of way. You know what I mean? In the long run, you did all that, but now you still got to go. Now you straighten your life up, but you still got to work. And probably a little extra longer because now you're done with the jet. You see what I'm saying? People just getting their lives together at, at 35 and 40. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. People going to be working. We, a, a lot of us, just not even just because of wrong decisions that we made back in the day, just the way the, gov the, 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 the government and everything just how everything just went, went about and went away at the time, you know, we naturally gonna work past our retirement age, okay? Now let's we just own some stuff, own some stuff, and you know, when you, when you it, it's, that's a weird thing because it's good to work for yourself, but you still kind of working for somebody. Oh, absolutely. And in a sense, people. you know what I'm saying? Because you're yeah. working for the people, and you're yeah. still working for that government. You're still working for somebody, no matter how you look at it. Absolutely. You, it's just when you work for yourself, you set your own hours. And when you work for yourself, your own hours are 24 7. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie about that one. That's the truth. Okay, but I ain't going. I'm just getting all over the place with that one. But right. I'm just talking about just financial. It, it, it's it's basically it's a waste of time. If you're gonna sit back and be a businessman, don't be a street businessman. You know what I'm saying? Do it the right way. Stack stack your money the best way you can. Find you a nice trade or or use your uh, any kind of education you got. Stack your money, invest it. Illinois would be more than happy to give you a small business loan and go from there. Even That's with, the best way to do it. Even with that, man, we as we get ready to conclude this flavor in your air, um, cradle to the grave, man. I, I want to say thank you, Shelly, for being my 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 man, man, my brother. You know, uh -huh. love you, man. And uh, we made it, man. We made it. We're making it. And uh, I'm happy that we got a story to, to share. Right, no problem. I'd like to show you more. I just got so much stuff. I just want to <laughs> just blow out there because I didn't, like it, man. But, this is the best thing about what we do. Right. We can always do videos, you know what I mean? Okay. So this this is a beautiful thing, man. But flavor in your ear, uh, once again, season season one is a wrap, man. So right. I'm blessed to have you conclude season one. Season no problem, two will be coming back late fall. In the midst of that, I am doing uh, some blogs. I get my blogs ready. Hey, once again, man, tell, tell the world peace, bro. Peace, brother.